Today we're talking routine. Should we have one and how would we go through it? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play the final two holes here at Warrington Golf Club and talk you through my shots, the process I have, how I go about my routines, why I've selected those shots. So we're here on the 17th hole, it's a par five, it's 510 yards. If you look straight down there, the fairway slopes a little bit to left to right, uh, right to left, sorry. I've got a couple of bunkers now. I've got one, the final one's 260 as I go down there. So that would be my biggest problem. Also, there's gorse over the bunkers, so I don't want to go into that. What I want to do is get the ball started down more of the right of the fairway and let it turn back into the middle. Because if I do that, even if I push it, it's only trees. If I were trying to hit my fade down here and I pulled it, I'd probably be in a little bit of bother. So what I do, if we just wander over here with me, knowing that I know that the trouble's left now, as I come and assess that, that would be the first part of every good routine. Assessing what the danger is, what's the shot, what does it require here? So we know we want a right to left one. And as we look down from directly behind the golf ball here, the first part for me is all about picking an intermediate target. So from my golf ball and down here now, what I can see is two sheds in the distance and I'm gonna go at the right one of those sheds, hopefully hitting a bit more of a draw on it. So as I raise my club up and I have it over the golf ball, I pick the shed, I draw it back down. And what I can see then between the golf ball and there is this little bit of pine straw there. And that is where I'm now gonna aim my club face. I would have a couple of practice swings feeling the motion I want to get, so feeling a bit more inside and releasing. I then have one last look from behind the ball and at the target, get in, align my club to that intermediate target that I've taken, and then from there, little waggle, try and feel the shot, a glance at my target, one more glance, and then I pull my trigger. And that is safely away well down past the bunkers, my little draw, jobs are good and I should talk about my routine more often. Let's get down into the fairway, look at shot two. So now that we're down on the fairway, I think the most important part is getting some form of distance. So for me, using my range finder always starts my routine off here because once I've zapped the flag here, 190, I now know how far I've got to go. I can look at that and say, well, the pin's at the front of the green for me, so I know I've got about 25 yards of depth beyond that, so I can actually hit this golf ball 215 yards maximum. Because one of the big things, as we look down, about 10 yards short of the green, there is a trap. So I've got to fly it a minimum of 185 yards to make sure I'm covering it. So that then comes into my club selection. If I just stood here and thought, nah, it's about 160, it's about 190, I won't know what it is. So whether you've got a watch, a range finder, whatever it is, even using the marker posts and you pace things out, course planner, get a distance when you're down on the fairway. That's gonna start your thought process and your decision process off. From there now, I know the ball here as I stand to this one, the ball's a little bit above my feet, so I'm most likely gonna hit a draw. So I'm gonna start this ball a little bit right of my target for allowing it to come back in, which is good as well because those bunkers are actually left of the flag. So I can aim to the right knowing that if I push it, it's okay. And I've got room to actually turn it back on. From there then, not much wind in today, tiny little bit, if anything, it's slightly off the right. So again, that's gonna move it a little bit more. So now it's basically what flies 185 for me, pick that and then I can go from there. So my six iron is my 190 club. So I can know that I can hit that. And if it goes a little bit beyond, it's good. If it pulls up a little bit short with a poor strike, I'm still on the green. So six iron and then I pick my target again from there. Again, it's all about, you know, and this is one of the questions, should you have a practice swing? I would always say, yes, you've got a free chance to actually try and create what you're about to do. If you're stood over the golf ball thinking, well, I need to get a little bit more of my drawy type feeling going on, and you're actually trying to do that while swinging, 
why not have one practice swing behind the golf ball and say to yourself, well, I know my shot shape. I see it starting 10 yards right of the flag on this tree that's behind the green and I want it to move back. So that would feel that it's a bit more here into there and a bit more release. At least now I've got a slight understanding and a feeling of what I'm trying to create. So as I stand behind, again, I pick my intermediate target. I get good alignment here. Take a look at my target. Little waggles, keeping active. There, one last look and try and emulate that draw feeling. Okay, and not my best there, I've pushed it, but it's okay. I've managed to get it up down there, it was a pretty poor strike from me, but because I've made good decision processes, I've actually got away with that one. Let's head up towards near the green and play that next shot. Okay, so pulled up a little bit short of the, um, the green here was a pretty bad strike, but because I'd aimed correctly and made a good um, process beforehand, I've actually done that. As if I would have tried taking the flag directly on, I would most likely have bounced into that bunker. So having a good shot process is going to allow me, when I do make mistakes, to actually have my margins of error be a lot greater as well. If I'm making it that there's only a tiny amount of uh, margin for error, I'm going to find myself in worse positions. So do, do you just bear that in mind when you're doing it. Are you trying to pull off like the ultimate shot, the super high risk one? Because if it goes wrong, is it going to go really wrong? But from here now, I've got 30 yards to the front of this green. And as we can see, it slopes down to it. So if I were to play a bit more of a pitch and run style shot, I've got to be absolutely pinpoint accurate, judge it correctly, let the slope sweep it in. If I hit it a little bit long, it might get away from me. If it gets a little bit short, it might run off and fall towards the front left of the green. So from here, I'm not quite sure about that predictability of what happens when it lands. But what I can do, it's a pretty nice lie, I can throw it all the way to the flag. I can get my most lofted wedge out and try and land it just before the flag. Also in the knowledge that again, if I do go a little bit big, there's loads of green beyond it. So I'm not having to be exactly spot on. If it's a great shot, it pitches two or three feet before it, a couple of bounces and stops. If I get it a little bit bold, I've got a 20 footer coming back for birdie. And after that poor second shot, that's still pretty good to be in that position. So from here, I'm gonna take my 58 because I want my most lofted club to get it up and get it high and stopping quickly. I know that if I make round about a belt length swing for myself here and keep the loft on it, it will go that round about 30 yards. So for me then, it's all about nice tempo, trying to keep that feeling. And then I just pick a spot for me. I know the green moves a little right to left. So I'm gonna aim this about three feet right of the flag. Take my alignment. Again, I know the distance. I've just gotta be confident and trust it and try and land it into that spot. And we would see what happens. Okay, so just gone a little bit bold there. And exactly like I said, didn't put too much pressure on myself. And now, as we look down there, I've got about 15 to 18 foot for birdie, all because of the right shot selection. So always assess those, what could go wrong? What's gonna be an easy shot for me? What am I confident with? And then start to make your shot choices from there. Let's go and roll this putt in. Okay, so we're onto the green now, and this is where I think being meticulous about your routine has to happen, because if we watch the pros, they would mark the golf ball, probably with their lucky coin, because they are, you know, a little bit superstitious as they go through it. But then they do the same things over again. They would come directly behind that marker and the flag and take a look down. They may have a wander around if they're not getting much of a read here to sort of middle of the putt. You would see some of them doing the aim point things. If you don't do that, that's completely fine. But as long as you're sort of stalking the putt a little bit while your other playing partners are having a go, you can start to get an idea of where you feel this ball is gonna 
start to break because when we come down behind it here, what I'm looking for is the apex of my brake. So for me, knowing that the green runs this way a little bit more, I would want to see that it's going left to right. And as I draw my eyes up and down the line, I can now pick an apex point that I think once when it starts to reach around here, it's going to start to work more back towards the hole. So as I draw my eyes back down this line, there's something that I've already noticed along that line that I would now align my golf ball to. And then as I track my eyes back down even further, about a foot in front, there's a little bit of grass here that really stands out to me. And from there, that's where I want to get my ball started over. Then it's all about the pace. Is it downhill? Is it uphill? If it's left to right, is it going to swing more and get faster as it goes down? Those things I take into consideration. So once I've done my reading and I've assessed what's going on, I get over and what I would do is track my eyes up past the apex point to level with whether this one I'm going to be pretty much just leaving it as if the hole was two inches, three inches short of where it is because it's a little downhill, only a tiny bit. So. I have a couple of strokes with my eyes now focused on that target. My eyes are seeing the distance, feeding that back to my hands, and that's letting the putter head flow the desired distance. I have a couple of putting strokes, feeling that pace then. Get your alignment aid on your putter lined up to your intended target. In, and then from there I have one look, track my eyes back up, second look, withdraw, and then hit as I go through and I just under read it a tiny little bit of pushing the stroke as well though so wasn't too bad I gave myself an opportunity from there then I've got a very very simple little tap into the hole here I just tap that one in and there we go I've made my par let's go down onto the 18th and see again how routine comes in there when there's a lot of trouble coming in off the tee Okay, so the 18th hole here at Warrington, 434 yards, a par four. Quite a difficult hole. If we pan down it, what we will see is three massive bunkers down the right-hand side here. And you can probably hear a little bit of road noise. If I go right of them, there's out of bounds. There's also the A49, a very busy main road. So I do not want to be going over there. Then, that frames the left of the hole is all these trees now. So if you've got a good round, and I want to talk a little bit about doubt here if you've got a good round going this is probably going to be the tee shot that would put real fear into you you've got all that problems right you've got trouble left and it looks like quite a narrow hole as we're actually stood to it so getting a good shot away is going to a take a really committed swing and the right shot choice now one of the big things here and if you've like if you've ever got a good round going here We've got the 11th hole, the 10th hole, the 12th hole, the 13th hole, all to the left. No out of bounds whatsoever. So there's no point of me stood on this one, aiming slap bang down the middle, or even to the right, trying to draw it back in. Because if I get a little bit of a push, I'm gonna bring the bunkers into play. If it goes a little bit worse, I'm actually gonna to start to uh, bring the out of bounds into play. So get away from that trouble. It doesn't matter if you're playing from the 11th hole, you're still gonna be on the fairway and the iron that you'll be using, you can get it up over the trees. It might be, you know, on your course, it might be a little bit like this and you've got to put yourself into a position where I've got the world to the left and trouble to the right, just go left. Here is a do not go right shot. But then that feeds into that doubt, do not go right. If you're stood over this ball, and I'm aiming maybe just down the left, but I'm stood over thinking, don't go right, Matt, do not go right. And I would imagine I'm not the only one when I'm stood over a golf ball, the old brain's going at 100 miles an hour and talking to myself. What I've got to do is go through my good process again. So I know here now, I'm gonna aim down the tree line and hit my tiny little fade. If I slice it, I'll probably just get to the bunkers. If I hit it good, it fades into the middle. If I pull it, I'm left. So again, I go through my process of picking my targets, having my practice swing over the golf ball, but then when I'm actually stood over and ready to pull the trigger, I'm gonna monitor my self-talk. Instead of don't go right, don't do this, I'm gonna say to myself, committed little fade down the left, fade it off the trees, whatever it is, something that I know makes sense, a positive thought, 
as I get in then, take my alignment as normal, stand here, fade it off the trees, fade it off the trees, look at my target, fade it off the trees, and then there, even if I do get a little bit too much on it, it's actually okay, that's probably the worst shot I could have hit, and I'm still in play as it's gone through. If I would have been there, having my don't do this, don't do that, I'm not gonna make that committed swing, and ultimately I would probably hit it more into the trouble. So stay committed, keep yourself taught confident if you're gonna do it, then commit to those golf swings. Let's go down there. Okay, so I've got down into the fairway. Again, it's all about now. Yardage starts it off, so range finder every time. Pretty much if I'm anywhere from, I would say 50 yards out up to you know a 250 shot, I'm always gonna try and get the distance. 205 all the way back to the flag. I've only got five yards behind it. Think of it as like, as you're playing, you're your own caddy. You've gotta have the conversation with yourself to try and figure things out. So I know there's no, no real wind here. 205 is the flag, 210's maximum. Middle of the green is probably 195. So I'm thinking, well, what flies it 195 for me? Looking to 195, 200, that's gonna be a five iron. So again, I've got my club choice there. I now know that there's more bunkers on the right than there is the left, just level with the flag. I know it's a bit more of a grassy hollow. I do tend to like to hit a fade with my irons and try and draw my driver. So I know now that I wanna hit a little bit more left, the pin as well is slap bang in the middle. So I've got the option to draw and fade, but again, the danger is more right. So everything I'm doing is thinking, well, if I hit this shot and it goes wrong, what happens? If I hit a good one, we know what happens. But I don't want to be taking on too much, biting too much off the cherry here. So I'm going to hit five iron. I'm going to aim a little bit left and try and get my little fade on it. Okay, a little bit chunky on it, but I've got my shot shape. It's slap bang just at the front of the green. I've got two putts now. I make my par. Let's head on down there. Okay, so I got down to the front of the green here, left myself a little bit of a long putt, but you know, it's safely aboard. I chose the right shot shape, I executed that. I just needed a slightly better strike and I would have got it back there. So from here now, the sort of acceptance has to kick in. I'm not gonna hold that. If I do, it's a miracle, it's a real bonus. But what I've gotta do is make sure that here, I'm really in control of my pace because it's a long way. If I leave it short, I've got another long putt to go. If I end up whacking it forwards past the hole, again, I've got something tricky coming back. So as I get this sort of length of putt, one of the things that I would like to do is just sort of walk up the line a little bit. So even just starting to gauge how far the putt actually is. If I'm just stood there thinking, oh, it's 30, 40 foot. If I actually walk it, I actually start to get a feeling of how far I'm moving up and down this line. So already now I know that I've walked about 50 foot. So I've probably got about 70 feet here. As I'm doing this as well, I'm also getting a gauge for the green. What does the slope feel? Don't walk directly on your line, walk to one side of it. But I'm getting an idea now that the green's a little bit tilted from right to left. It is about the line on here, obviously. I don't want to be aiming miles out, but it's more about that pace as I'm on this point. So. I know I've got the feeling there that it's a little bit right to left, so I take a look behind. And again now, I know it's also a little bit uphill, so as I get into this, I'm gonna focus on a point that's about two or three feet beyond the flag. So I get in, I've picked my alignment spot out here, but then it's all about having a look at that point, a couple of feet beyond the flag for me for this putt. And again, with my eyes locked on it and swinging the putter, my eyes are feeding the information to my hands, which are feeding the feeling to the putter head. I have a few of these just to get me feeling how far it should be. And then as I get in, I'm not trying to hit, I'm just trying to create a nice tempo and let the weight of the club roll this ball out. Okay, not bad, just needed a little bit more on there, but it's okay, but again, that acceptance comes in. I've given myself a lot of work to do here, but as we wander up, I've now got to go and finish the job off. So 
I've got to be positive and walking up, not thinking, oh God, I've left myself so much to do. Be in the frame of mind to go and hold the putt and actually see it through. So as we get over again, it's that routine that we saw on the 17th. I'm having a look from down below, seeing what the contours are doing. I'm picking my starting line. I take my alignment. Right edge of the putt, I'm seeing it. Right edge of the hole, sorry. From there then, I'm back in. I go into my process. I go into my routine, take the setup, feel a little bit of my pace, eyes locked onto the point I want to send it out to, get in, good setup, last look, let it flow, oh, and not what we wanted, we didn't want to end the uh, video on a three putt, but that's the way it goes sometimes, I've got to accept that that five iron cost me it and then the putt, I left myself too much to do. But there, that's a little bit of how the routine would work when I'm out on the golf course. From picking a target, understanding the distance, knowing the troubles. As long as I can go through that each time and be consistent with doing it each time, I'm gonna see that my golf gets better because I'm not just guessing as I'm stood over every single shot. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Comment down below, do you wanna see more types of video like this as well where we're talking about course management and things like that? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in your next lesson.